Not all stitch markers are the same. I have seen so many people talking about how much they hate stitch markers because they open stitches and blah, blah, blah. And for that reason, they prefer to use yarn scraps. But again, not all stitch markers are the same. And this is just one of the things that I'm going to talk about in today's video. If you're new here in the channel, I am Bianca from Crochetnix and in today's video, I'll share with you a couple of do's and don'ts when it comes to crocheting amigurumis. And the first one I already told you in the introduction of today's video and it's stitch markers. And there is a huge variety of stitch markers in the market. I don't have that many here with me because lots of accessories that I had were left in Brazil when I moved to Finland. But I have a couple here and let me show you. And it's very good because it does not open the stitches when we are crocheting. You can mark the beginning or the end of the round, whichever you prefer but it does not mark the, the stitches. And just so you know, the one that I use the most from the box is this one. This is the smallest one here in the box. And this one you can use to mark the beginning or the end of the round, whichever you prefer, but it does not open the stitches when you're crocheting. So this is very, very good. And I also have one of the cheap ones here. This, I, I don't know the brand. I don't even know if there's a brand for this. And I even picked up the same color so you can see the difference between them. And when we put these two stitch markers together, you can see how big this one is. When we crochet amigurumis and mark with this stitch marker here, this open the stitches and it does not look very good because whenever you remove the stitch marker to replace it in the following round, you can see a big gap between stitches, while with this one, it does not happen. My second advice for you is to match the yarn to the crochet hook. Adjusting the crochet hook size that you're using to the yarn weight that you chose is one of the most important things when it comes to amigurumi too. And the biggest tip that I have to share with you is use a smaller crochet hook size than the one recommended in the label. I have an example here just to illustrate. This yarn is one of my favorites from Hobie. This is a fingering yarn, the one that I use the most to crochet, and they recommend a crochet hook size from 3 to 3.5 millimeters. I would never ever crochet an amigurumi with a 3 millimeter crochet hook size using this kind of yarn here. So if it recommends a 3, go to a 2.5 or a 2.2 and your stitches will be very very tight without forcing your wrists too much, of course. Tip number 3 is to mark the placement of all amigurumi parts before sewing. And I cannot emphasize enough how important it is. I have a box of pins here and I cannot live without these pins. Having different pins at different sizes can be very important. Of course, you don't need that many pins, I guess. I got too excited with pins, but it's very important to have at least one box of pins like this. This is not expensive. I guess this one I paid like three or four euros in AliExpress and it, you can find these kind of boxes in any local store next to you and they are usually very cheap and it comes with lots, lots of pins. This is very, very important. And if you want to learn how do I use the pins to mark all the parts of the amigurumi before sewing, there is a video here in the channel where, actually there is a series of videos here in the channel where I teach different uh, sewing techniques. And I also explain how do I use the pins to make the sewing process even easier. And in this video, I teach these techniques with this beautiful amigurumi pig, which I'll leave the link in the description. And since we are talking about sewing and all the tips that I give when it comes to sewing and pins, this is connected to my tip number four, which is ensuring the symmetry in our amigurumi. I mean, double check the symmetry before sewing, before placing the eyes, at least for me, this is something very important. It's so, so sad when you finish a whole amigurumi and you look at it and it's like the eyes are placed uh, differently. One is in one round and the other is in the round below it. You can see those kind of things. And it's very sad because once you finish, like you close the amigurumi with the inverted magic ring, you already stuffed, you already sewed everything together. What will you do? Well it can be extremely demotivating to have to do it all again just because of a simple tiny mistake. So if I want to place the eyes between, I don't know, rounds 11 and 12, I count all the rounds from the 
a magic ring until I reach the, the, the round, the correct round. I put the pins just to make sure they're in the same line. If you want to sew the ears, place the pins. That's why pins are so important. I always put pins and place pins everywhere to make sure that they are in the right place and there is a symmetry in the amigurumi. And do never fast enough before ensuring that they are in the right place. And what do I mean by that? Sew one ear, don't fast enough, sew the other. Check if, if they are in the same place and if it is okay, fast enough, because if it's not, it's easier to remove it and sew it again. And my tip number five, the things that you should do is check the eye size. And to explain about this tip, I have a very good example here for you. Because this was the original pattern that I created. This is supposed to be a pin. You can see that there is a pin here. You can pin it in your backpack, in a purse or the outfit, whatever. But this is a pin. And I used a very small eye size. I guess it's eight millimeters. Yeah. Yeah, it's eight. So it's an eight millimeter um, eye size, but I also wanted to crochet this uh, hamburger in different sizes. And this is exactly the same pattern. I just changed uh, the, the yarn and used a couple of other techniques to make them in different sizes, which there is a whole video dedicated to it here in the channel. And I will leave in the description and also here so you can check later, okay? But just so you know, using the same pattern, I created different sizes. And if I used the same eye size for all the hamburgers that were crocheted, it would look weird. Can you imagine an 8mm eye size in this big hamburger here? It would look so weird. So always check the eye size according to your amigurumi. Because in this case, for example, I used an 8 here I used a 10. I guess this is a 10 millimeter eye size. For this one, I guess I used a 14. I don't think it's, yeah, it's not a 12. This is 14. And I wanted a bigger one for the last hamburger, but I didn't have one. So I used 14 again, because this was the biggest that I had. But honestly, I would like to have a 16 or 18 with this one. So adjust the eyes according, the size of the eyes, according to the size of your amigurumi. So I already talked about five things that you should do when it comes to crocheting amigurumi. And now I'll talk about five things that you shouldn't do, at least in my humble opinion. <laughs> and the first thing that I really believe you shouldn't do is use chenille yarn if you're a beginner. I always say it and using chenille yarn can be super difficult, especially if you're a beginner. I usually say that if you start crocheting amigurumis with chenille yarn and you manage to do it, you are a genius because this is super hard. Really, it is super hard. It's a bit more difficult to differentiate the stitches depending on the yarn because there are a couple of chenille yarns that are easier and others are a bit more complicated to work with. But all in all, I think start working with a cotton yarn or a cotton with acrylic yarn is the best way to go. The second thing I strongly advise you, I mean, you shouldn't do, is cut the yarn tails too short. I know that sewing can be something very boring. This is not our favorite part of crocheting amigurumis. I know that. But it can be even more difficult if you cut a very short tail to sew amigurumi parts together. But of course, you don't want it to be so big and you have a huge waste of yarn. So how do you measure it? Again, I won't tell you this one. If you want to learn the amount of yarn, I mean, the necessary amount of yarn to cut before sewing amigurumi parts together, check this tutorial. The third thing that you definitely shouldn't do is stress too much over color changes. I see lots of people stressing too much about these color changes, especially when there is a color change between rounds. But let's be honest, amigurumis are crocheted in continuous rounds. So if it's continuous rounds, you have a spiral. And if it's a spiral, of course, there will be a difference. Don't stress too much over those stuff. There are a couple of amigurumis that I think of course, it all depends on the project that you're creating, but it's totally acceptable to have these minor changes in the amigurumi. And I have a big example here. I crocheted this cat from Alice in Wonderland. I love the book. I love the story, all the characters, the movies. I think I love everything about Alice in Wonderland, and I have already crocheted 
all the characters, just so you know. But here we have lots of color changes because, I mean, in the arms, the body and the tail. And I didn't stress that much about over color changes. I simply changed the color after every round and it looks perfect in the end. The fourth thing that you shouldn't do is ignore pain. This is something really serious and it took me a while to gather the courage to come here and talk to you about it because I am suffering this issue myself. It has started in March and I even shared on my Instagram account a couple of photos and also in my newsletter. In case you're not subscribed to my newsletter, do so. The link is in the description too. But I shared with you because I think it's very important and I wanted to um, make everyone aware that this can be an issue. Sometimes we ignore the things that we are feeling and, and crochet is something so interesting. We can get so immersed in the activity we forget the whole world around us and we just want to crochet. We make fun of it and it is funny. Um, sometimes I'm here on the couch just crocheting and my husband calls me and I say, let me just finish this round. And we make fun of it because that's it. That's what we do. I'll just finish this round. I'll, I'll just finish this hat. I'll just finish this. And we don't stop. And I was so focused on crocheting and I make roomy. I had a deadline for it and I forced myself to my limits. I I had signs that I was not a hundred percent and I ignored to keep crocheting and in the following day I was in so so much pain that I couldn't even grab a pencil and I went to university you all know that I'm a student I'm a master's degree student and I couldn't write do you have any idea how much pain I was suffering um, I couldn't write I couldn't type I could <laughs> can I can't even talk about grabbing a crochet hook. My wrists and my thumb was hurting so, so much. Not only the pain itself, because it's awful to feel the pain, but it's also something that messes with our feelings because I was really sad to be prevented from crocheting. I couldn't crochet for weeks, almost a month without grabbing a crochet hook. And it really, really hurts. So don't do that to yourself. If you start feeling pain, pause, rest. It's better to rest for two days than being prevented to from crochet for like a month or two, the way that I was. I am still recovering now that I'm recording this video. I'm taking things really slow. This is usually not the rhythm that I, I like, but I have to do this. And the last thing that I have to share with you in this video is don't be afraid to start over. If you're not 100% satisfied with the project that you're crocheting, don't be afraid to start this amigurumi again or even pause it for a while, like leave it aside and start something new. But I have to add something here. If you're a beginner, don't frog it like thousands of times until you reach perfection. And I always say it to beginners, I know you want your amigurumi to look perfect, but if you keep frogging it all the time, you will feel discouraged to continue. If you're a beginner, again, the best thing is finish this project and start it again and compare the result. Finish the second project and start it again and then you can compare how much you improved from the second and from the third amigurumi to the first one that you crocheted you'll see that you will improve everything. The stitches, the stuffing, the sewing, all the techniques. It will be much better than if you keep frogging it thousands of times until the amigurumi is 100% the way you want it to be. And these are the five do's and don'ts when it comes to crocheting amigurumi that I wanted to share with you today. Please let me know in the comments if there is anything else that I didn't talk in today's video but you still want to share with the whole craft community. I will love to hear them and who knows, maybe I can do a part to this video and include some of your tips in it. Thank you so much and now I'll leave you this video here because I am pretty sure you'll like it too.